But you know, this is probably a good thing. We can use this as part of the metaphor, right? If there are 17 of us on the screen, notice that you can take all of the 17 in, but you cannot take in the particulars of any one. It's only when you look directly at this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, that you can see the particulars of a particular object. You cannot take in all 17 and see the particulars of them. So this illustrates very well what I was pointing out that the Buddha said and why it is that concentration practice at some point becomes important in almost all of the spiritual traditions, narrowing and focusing the mind, focusing the attention <laughs> until you have stable enough attention that you can see through this barrage of perceptions which come 17 for each moment. And a lot of spiritual practice and spiritual life over many years is just learning to be able to penetrate through the multitude of perceptions and objects in order to see that essential beingness which you already are. It is the foundation in the same way that as we look at the screen here, we can see 17 faces if we look at them individually. We can also see a cloud of faces, all of which are there on a background of black screen. Consciousness itself, that which you are, is that background. Consciousness itself, awareness itself, is that which makes perception possible. It is not the perception itself. This is why consciousness, awareness, is often referred to as that which illumines the world. Because without the light of consciousness, as the traditional scriptures say it, without the light of awareness, no objects are visible. We know this practically because we go to sleep each night and we let go of the light of consciousness, the light of awareness, and we fall into this deep reverie. Waking up, is not really the body, body physically waking up before the body itself has even the slightest sense of sensation. Consciousness itself floods the mind. And with that illumination, the knowing of the body, the sensation, I am here in bed, I am warm, I am cold, I slept well, I didn't sleep well, I need to pee. All of that comes as a consequence of consciousness itself first flooding awareness, flooding the waking state. Bhagavan Ramana used to always use the metaphor of the movie theater to illustrate the same thing. In an, old, in an earlier time, this was the new technology during his time. Today, I talk about computer screen and the background of black. He talked about what you are seeing on the screen of a consciousness or the screen of awareness are just the objects like a movie in the theater. The fire can burn. The war can go on. The snow can be falling. When the movie goes off, the screen is not burnt, it is not frozen, it is not exploded. But the whole time that all of those objects were moving on the screen, 
we sitting in the theater are not aware that the screen is there. It's not until the objects are gone that we become aware that the screen was there all along, hidden behind the objects and making the visibility of the objects possible. Consciousness functions in the same way. Your task, if you will, if you want one, if you need one, is to see this for yourself. How do you see it for yourself? By remembering under all circumstances, all conditions, high, low, pleasant, unpleasant, that which is aware is here now. Done repeatedly, this simple practice, I am aware, asking the simple question, what is aware here? Just noticing, I am aware. That which is aware is here now by doing this over and over. Very simply, very easily, not with a big struggle, but very sincerely, with an open heart, you will come to understand that you are that which is aware. Not just that which is aware is here now, but that that which you are is that awareness. And out of that awareness or held in that awareness is everything that you see. Okay.